Hello, today we're going to talk about Vietnam. The French colonized Southeast Asia in the 19th century, and they established the Union of Indochina, which included Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. And World War, uh, not just under French rule, until World War II when Japan uh, invaded to take because they want to control over the resources that were available there. So they overthrew the French and then a group led by Ho Chi Minh uh, was called the Viet Minh. They started fighting against the French and they drove the, started fighting against the Japanese and they drove the Japanese out and took over North Vietnam. After World War II, the French tried to take back uh, Vietnam from the Viet Minh. But in 1954, the Viet Minh attacked a French garrison in Dien Bien Phu. Uh, I'm going to pronounce most of this stuff wrong. It fell after 54 days of siege, and the French withdrew. So in Geneva, Switzerland, following this, a diplomatic meeting was uh, held to end the fighting in Indochina. At this time, the Geneva Accords were signed on July, in July 1954, and that served as a ceasefire. What the Geneva Accords provided was Laos and Cambodia became their own independent countries, and Vietnam was split at the 19th parallel, 17th parallel, into North and South Vietnam. North Vietnam was run by Ho Chi Minh, and he made it into a communist country, and the South was a uh, non-communist government. They were supposed to be reunited in the elections of 1956, and... The Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, with this, or CETO, as it looks like, the U.S. pledged to help protect South Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. So that was CETO, the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization. U.S. and other countries pledged to protect those um, new nations. So the American involvement in Vietnam happened when President Dwight D. Eisenhower saw that the elections that were about to happen in 1956 were gonna to lead to a communist run nation. So what he did is he sent military advisors to South Vietnam to help train their soldiers, give them a, give the leader, leadership military tactics, and had them stop uh, and supported the refusal of joining in with the election because he saw which way it was going. Kong, uh, were communists in South Vietnam that started fighting against the South Vietnamese government. He won territories and started winning support of the peasants and workers in those areas to sort of offset this. Uh, the new next president, John F. Kennedy, he sent more soldiers into Viet South Vietnam and called them military advisors, even though he was just stocking up on troops because he saw where this was all headed, and he was trying to uh, support South Vietnam. He sent 16,000 troops by the end of 1963 to South Vietnam. Next president after John Kennedy was assassinated was President Johnson, and he started sending boats on reconnaissance missions to North Vietnam just to see what they had going on there. Uh, in August 1964, in the Gulf of Tonkin, he stated that two military destroyers, or U.S. destroyers, were fired upon by the North Vietnamese. At this time, Congress uh, put into effect the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution that gave authority to the president to take all necessary measures to repel any attack against the forces of the United States and to prevent further aggression. 
And that was the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, and that's where the two ships had been fired on. For military action by the U.S. forces helping the South, Vietnamese, trying to contain communism. Uh, in, uh, in January 1968, the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong launched a Tet Offensive, which went to attack the major cities in South Vietnam. Their attacks were repelled, but not before it was seen by the world. And uh, this is when America started, the citizens of America, started wanting out of the war. This led to the American withdrawal from Vietnam. Now, a lot of Americans wanted uh, uh, out of Vietnam immediately. They wanted just to withdraw their troops. President Nixon, who became the new president, uh, wanted what was called Vietnamization, which was basically just letting the Vietnamese take over the war little by little. Uh, he wanted to, he wanted their people to fight their own war. So he, instead of just taking everybody out immediately, he figured if they left little by little, then the South Vietnamese people could continue the fight as it, as it were. Instead of if they just left, they would be overrun immediately and destroyed. Um, in 1970, uh, Nixon, because he had the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, he could basically do what he wanted without asking. He sent military troops into Cambodia to attack Viet Cong supplies. He did not ask anybody for permission to do this. And what this led to was Congress, who was Democratic, who was of the Dem Democratic Party. Nixon was Republican. So they were at odds with each other. So there was a power struggle between the legislative branch and the executive branch, or between the president and Congress. So what Congress did, they saw this as uh, a political power struggle and they were gonna win it. So they repelled the Gulf of Tonkin resolution to, uh, in response to Nixon's actions of sending troops into Cambodia. A treaty started was signed in Paris, France on January 27th, 1973. This required American troops to leave Vietnam, the return of POWs, and the maintenance of a de demilitarized zone at the 17th parallel. America uh, went with the treaty. The North Vietnamese did not. As soon as the Americans left, they went through and defeated the South Vietnamese and destroyed them and led to a unified communist Vietnam. There's no longer a North and a South Vietnam, it's Vietnam and it was communist. Uh, because of this, America cut off all relations with them and trade until 1995 or 1994 when they opened up trade again and in 1995 they started relations again with Vietnam. This has been a little bit about Vietnam. Hope it helps.